So, I'm uh, delighted to welcome uh, Kate McKay, CMO of IPRIO, um, a leading financial technology company, uh, to, uh, to, to Baselines. So, Kate, welcome. Welcome Thank to you. Baselines. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, our pleasure. My pleasure. It's Women's Day today. It, it, it is. I think it's <laughs> Women's Day every day. <laughs> yeah, well, it but. should be. How are you <laughs> celebrating? Um, you know, just being uh, my woman? awesome woman self. <laughs> What we're focusing on in the marketing team really is brand in a different way um, than we have served our brand um, previously, which is thinking about the iPro brand as a whole. And that sounds like not rocket science, it's something pretty obvious. Companies have a company name and they work on their brand and the reputation of that brand and the identity of that brand. We are, uh, as I said in describing iPro, we are many things to many people. That is both a challenge and it's, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Right? It's a good thing because we have this tremendous reputation down at the product level and at the persona level with all of the people that we work with, our clients, our constituencies, we have a tremendous reputation and we have a very, very strong brand, but it means that we're a little bit dissected. And so what we think a lot about in my team now is how do we elevate the Iprio name? Um, and we're doing some really interesting things there. The other thing is really around technology and MarTech inside our organization, um, which is just playing around with you know, our marketing automation systems and our CRM and learning what data we can get out of it and how can we turn that data into decision-making tools and how can we better report on our activity and justify our existence and all of the stuff that is really the nuts and bolts of marketing today um, that is really just a, a, you know, a common part of what every marketer is dealing with now in today's marketing environment. We're you know, trying to um, take to the next level, and it's exciting when we figure out how to show something or get at something we couldn't get at before. This direct connection between our activities and the growth of the business is pretty exciting for my team. So my thesis here, coming back to my thesis. Yes, it, tell me your is, thesis. This is my blog after all, so I get, to, <laughs> I get to talk about my thesis. Do I have to agree with your thesis you do just not. because it's your blog? You don't. Okay. You, you can actually violently disagree, all right, which hit, is fine. Hit me with it. Hit me with your thesis. Um, my thesis is that the last um, uh, 10 years, so no, let's say 20 years. So let's say that digital marketing has meaningfully existed 20 or so years, maybe a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. um, and in the last 10 years, um, things like the marketing technology stack has emerged. Okay. And it started with CRM and then marketing automation and then uh, dynamic content generation and, and predictive analytics and whatever it may be, but the MarTech stack that's been the last 10 years, really, and, and a lot of it in the last five. Mm -hmm. um, and, yep. and so... At least calling it a MarTech stack. Yeah, so but my, my feeling is that the, the, the emphasis and what made digital marketing so attractive to so many of us in the marketing world is that it brought a level of measurability that didn't exist before. So my view is this whole modern marketing thing, mm -hmm. measurability and all that, needs to be balanced with this kind of renaissance or this actual renaissance and iconic intuitive creativity and when you put the two together that's where magical things can happen for a business and so what what I'm calling it is an evolution from modern marketing to cleverly stated postmodern marketing ah. <laughs> the premise of it I wholeheartedly agree with that the the whether you call it emotion whether you call it the human element you know it's, we can't lose sight of that. And we have, people got really excited about measurability. We're still excited about measurability, rightly so. You do need to measure it. Um, and I come from an industry and work in a company where all of us have come from an analytical financial services background. So measurability is key. And that is always a challenge for marketing. Historically has been you know, sort of last to the game of being able to really measure the results, right? It's always been very creative and people got really excited about making it real. I think that remains important, but at the end of the day, data is still just a tool. Hopefully it's a decision-making tool in your marketing efforts to help you target where you're going to see if the results that you're going after are actually achieving. I think this is going to resonate, but what do I know? Oh, I do know because I can see the results in my work. Um, but until there's not a human being at the other end of the buying cycle. There have to be human beings at this end being likable or 
provocative or creative or whatever that thing is that's going to resonate with the decision makers and influencers at the other end, the, the human element will never go away. Thank you.